Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about assisting with lumbar puncture. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. The learning objectives we will be discussing in this video will be brief note on anatomy of spinal cord, what is lumbar puncture, how to identify the site for insertion, what are the indications of lumbar puncture, what are the contraindications of lumbar puncture, what are the nursing considerations before, during and after lumbar puncture, what are the complications of lumbar puncture. Let's get into the session. Before starting lumbar puncture, we will see a short and a quick review of anatomy of spinal cord. The spinal cord extends from the base of the brain, that is brainstem, down to the lumbar region. Spinal cord is protected by the vertebral column and divided into five segments, cervical, thoracic, lumbar. The lumbar enlargement is a widened portion of the spinal cord. Then comes sacral and coccygeal regions. The brain and the spinal cord is covered by a protective membrane called meninges. Meninges consists of three layers, dura matter. This is the outermost layer and the tough membrane which surrounds the spinal cord and provides protection. Next is arachnoid matter. This is the middle layer. It is a thin membrane containing the cerebrospinal fluid in the subarachnoid space. The space between the arachnoid and pia matter is where the cerebrospinal fluid circulates. Next is the pia matter. This is the innermost layer and a delicate membrane adhering closely to the surface of the spinal cord. Cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid is a clear colorless fluid that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. CSF surrounds the spinal cord within the subarachnoid space and it acts as a protective cushion and provides nutrients to the central nervous system. Now, what is lumbar puncture? Lumbar puncture is also called spinal puncture, spinal tap, thecal puncture, and rachiocentesis. A lumbar puncture is a medical procedure in which a thin, sterile, hollow needle is inserted into the subarachnoid space in the lower back lumbar region to obtain the cerebrospinal fluid for diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. Now, indications include diagnostic and therapeutic indication, LP insertion site. The needle is inserted between the lumbar vertebrae usually between L3, L4 or L4, L5. Next is selection of lumbar puncture or spinal needle size. The needle size commonly ranges between 20 to 22 gauge. The choice of needle size depends on the patient's age. Next is position required for lumbar puncture. Lateral recumbent position or sitting is the preferred position. Lateral recumbent position, also known as the niches position. Ask patient to bring their knees up towards their chest flexing the hips and knees slightly. Head is flexed with the chin on the chest. This position helps to open up the spaces between the lumbar vertebrae for easier access during the lumbar puncture. This position becomes the first choice and this can help measure the seize of pressure. Next comes the sitting position. The sitting position is commonly used with a patient sitting on the edge of the bed or examination table laying forward and arching their back. Here there is a greater risk for herniation. Next, how to identify the site for insertion? Locate the iliac crests. Identify the highest point of the hip bones on both the sides of the lower back. These are the iliac crests. Find the midpoint. Imagine drawing an imaginary line between the top of the iliac crest 
The midpoint of this line would be the approximate midline of the lower back. Lumbar puncture placement. When performing a lumbar puncture, the needle is typically inserted along the midline of the lower back between the lumbar vertebrae L3 L4 or L4 L5. Indications for lumbar puncture. Diagnostic indications include suspected infections such as meningitis and cephalitis, suspected CNS inflammatory disorders like multiple sclerosis, Guillain Barre syndrome, suspected subarachnoid hemorrhage, and suspected neurological cancers, etc. Myelography is a diagnostic procedure where a contrast agent that is dye is inserted into the spinal canal during a lumbar puncture to visualize the spinal cord, nerve roots, and surrounding structures on X-ray images in order to detect abnormalities such as spinal cord compression, herniated discs, or tumors. Next indication is to measure the pressure of cerebrospinal fluid. Next comes therapeutic indications for lumbar puncture, mainly for medication administration or drainage. In medication, intrathecal medication administration such as analgesia, anesthesia, antibiotics, and antineoplastic drugs, that is, chemotherapy. Cerebrospinal fluid drainage is also indicated for lumbar puncture, which helps manage hydrocephalus by removing excess cerebrospinal fluid, thereby reducing the pressure on the brain. Now, contraindications for lumbar puncture include Skin infection at puncture site, for example, cellulitis at the lumbar puncture site. Next is coagulopathy or bleeding disorders. Patients with bleeding disorders or an anticoagulant medications. Next is increased intracranial pressure due to brain tumor in order to prevent potential herniation of the brain and also is contraindicated in unstable cardiovascular conditions, etc. Now, before performing the lumbar puncture, identify the patient correctly, explain the procedure to the patient, check for the informed consent where providing information about the expected sensations and the importance of remaining still during the procedure is explained. Next, Check the pre-vital signs. Check the order for diagnostics or therapeutic indication. Check the CBC, PT or PTT platelets and the serology report. Check the medication record for blood thinning or anticoagulant medications. Check for any allergy that is allergic to any medication such as local anesthetics. Instruct the patient to empty the bowel and bladder in order to promote comfort during the procedure. Arrange the articles. Ready-made lumbar puncture kit is available in some hospitals which has all the needed items for the procedure. Now, during the lumbar puncture procedure, hand washing and wear appropriate personal protective equipments as is the patient in the appropriate position for the lumbar puncture either sitting or in a lateral recumbent position here, let's see lateral recumbent position. Slide down the side rails and position the patient to the edge of the bed and ensure knee chest position. Assess the physician in doing the procedure and maintain a sterile feel during the procedure. Hand necessary instruments to the healthcare provider or the physician in a sterile manner. Medical practitioner role. Locate the site and mark it. Cleanse the site with antiseptic solution. Place sterile drape. Infiltrate the skin and the subcutaneous tissue with local anesthetic using 22 to 25 gauge needle. Nurse need to hold the patient tightly by standing opposite side and ensure knee chest position. Instruct the patient to remain immobile while inserting the needle by the medical practitioner. Insert the spinal needle with stillet into the subarachnoid space and the stillet is partly withdrawn to check if CSF is present. 
Once CSF flow is established, remove 1 to 2 ml of CSF in each of the four tubes. Send the samples to the lab for glucose, protein, cell count, for culture and gram staining or other tests, and cytology tests as indicated. If lumbar puncture is done for therapeutic purpose, CSF pressure can be checked or drug can be injected. The needle is removed and the punctured site is covered with bandage. Now, after performing lumbar puncture. The patient remains flat on the bed for 4 to 6 hours. Lying flat for a few hours can enhance patient comfort and reduce the potential for complications. Label the specimen container and send it to the lab. Monitor the vital signs. Monitor the neurological status. Monitor the pain score and provide analgesics if required. Monitor the intake output chart. Monitor the site for any cerebrospinal fluid leakage. Monitor the patient for any complications. Encourage increased fluid intake. Document the procedure. Complications of lumbar puncture include post-lumbar puncture headache. This occurs within 24 to 48 hours after the procedure. A throbbing headache when the patient is in upright position occurs. If headache is caused by a leakage of cerebrospinal fluid from the lumbar puncture site, a blood patch procedure may be needed. This procedure uses a small amount of blood taken from the patient vein to patch that is seal the leak. The blood is administered through a needle into the spinal canal in the same way that the lumbar puncture was done. Patient needs to lie in the bed for one to two hours after this procedure. This procedure may need to be repeated if headache is not relieved. Other complication is low back pain and this is usually temporary and improves with rest. Next is CSF leakage bleeding and brainstem herniation. Brainstem herniation is very rare and this may be due to excessive leakage of cerebrospinal fluid leading to decreased pressure in the spinal canal. So, so far we have discussed a brief note on anatomy of spinal cord, what is lumbar puncture, how to identify the site for insertion, what are the indications of lumbar puncture, what are the contraindications of lumbar puncture, what are the nursing considerations before, during, and after lumbar puncture? And what are the complications of lumbar puncture? If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.